Hello and welcome to this slightly different video than you are normally used to. Today we're going to be taking a look at my brand new plugin called AutoClip. And you might have seen this plugin in a different form in some of the older videos. And essentially it is a soft clipping plugin. It's a Max for Live plugin, so it is only available in Ableton. It's kind of in a finished state, but there's still some bugs and extra features that I want to add. But from playing around and testing it, it works really well. So I want to show it you today. So first of all, let's talk about what a soft clipper does. It's very similar in a way to a compressor where it brings down the volume of any loud parts of our waveforms. It's kind of closer to a limiter, but it also adds distortion, which a limiter and a compressor don't do, or generally anyway. And the real main benefit to using it is that you can increase the perceived loudness of your instruments and your track. It can also glue layers together like inside your drums. Now, the original reason why I built this plugin is because at the time I didn't really like how Saturator, for example, in Ableton uses a drive control where you increase the volume and then you decrease the output. Normally what you do is bring the drive up, but the drive or saturation only really starts to happen around zero dB up here. So then you need to bring the output volume back down to balance that drive out. But what a lot of people forget in this process is to make sure that the volume is matched before and after doing this. So turn the plugin off and look at what your volume is. So you see the max volume in that loop there is minus 1.15 decibels. Turn the saturator on. You see the volume is now above zero. So we need to work out the difference between those two volumes. So we go down 0.34 to zero and then another 1.15 down to where we were before. So it'd be 1.49, 1.49 decibel drop. You put this into your output down here and then you've got the exact same volume, the maximum peak volume before and after the plugin. But the big difference, of course, is that the perceived volume is louder. But I'm sure you will have come across plugins that say auto gain on them. And the gain doesn't actually accurately do this process of before and after. It just tries to kind of estimate what the loudness or the perceived loudness should be. And this brings us on to auto clip. So it's a Max for Live audio effect. And just a quick overview of the plugins, you've got the ceiling over here on the left, which is essentially where the volume is clipped or the maximum volume. You've got the shape underneath where you can switch between soft clipping and hard clipping. And you can see in the middle here, it'll show you what that knee essentially looks like. And if we were doing the same technique on this plugin, we could bring our ceiling down to, for example, minus two, which is below the volume before the plugin. And if you remember from before, we were about minus 1.15 or 1.9 before. So I'm going to increase the volume by 1.1 decibels on the wet gain here. And you see we're back to the volume before. Exactly the same principle as in Saturator there, but I personally find this method a little bit easier to use. So I thought, well, maybe we could automate this process. And that's where this section over here on the right hand side comes in, which is the auto gain section. And all you need to do is click on the record button here, press play on your track. And you'll see that the meter below should show you what the volume was before the plugin has been activated. Again, the volume is very slightly different. That's just my bad max for live programming. Once that number has stabilized, you can click on record again and it will activate the auto gain mode. Now this isn't just regular auto gain now. When we bring the ceiling down, nothing's actually going to happen to the auto gain. No volume is gonna change until we hit our before volume of minus 1.14. And you'll see this on the wet gain here. It's kind of grayed out now. We bring this down when we hit 1.14, 1 
you see the wet gain will start to increase, but only when we get past that ceiling on the clipper. Essentially what this means now is if we bring our ceiling down, you'll hear the volume increases kind of similar to those other auto gains, but if you look on the meter, the volume is always gonna be the same. You'll see here, there's another little bug here where the volume looks like it's a little bit louder, but if I reset this, and so it doesn't matter where you set your ceiling here, the volume is just gonna automatically correct itself. And you really wanna just get to that point where you can really hear the distortion, especially on like the kick drum and some of the claps and the hats and then bring it back up. And now we have increased the volume of our drums, but the volume is the same. So I'll turn this off. For me, this is just such a quick way to give my drum bus a bit of glue, clip off any of those really loud peaks that could be affecting my master later on. And I don't have to worry about constantly correcting the gain because the auto gain is always gonna set it to whatever your meter in here says. Now, obviously, if you do change any of the volumes in say the kick drum or the clap, you might just need to reset this here. For example, let's go back in here. I'll turn the kick drum down a little bit. All you have to do, just come back to your auto clip, click on record. You see the volumes dropped and then hit record again. And that's it, updates the auto gain feature. And of course, this isn't just limited to groups of instruments. Let's do this on our kick, record. Stabilized, click record again. Put another one on the clap chord. Record again. And you can see down here, this little meter here, the red dot at the bottom and the meter above is the clips, just to show you when it is actually doing something. There's also a window down here in the bottom right too, where you can see the clip level the ceiling. So you could see exactly how much you are clipping off or what you are clipping, which is also very useful because it might mean that you should go back and change your volume if something's a little bit too loud as well. And one of my other favorite features, when you want to do parallel processing with the mix dial, the auto gain will keep the dry and the wet signals exactly the same volume. If you look at the volume when the mix is at 100, of course we get the volume that was before, but when we bring the mix down, you'll see it's still the same volume. And the reason why this is useful for parallel processing is because when you combine the dry and the wet signal, if they are different volumes to each other, you'll get an overall change in volume. And this might change your decision on whether you should have the mix at a certain level. So now I can just blend this in and out. Not have to worry about that final volume and just listen to the balance that I want to get with my dry and my wet signals. Plugging off. Plugging on. This will also work on other instruments too. Like let's put this on the bass. Now the thing about bass and other instruments is you might find that they don't have a bigger dynamic range. So clipping may just end up in a lot of heavy distortion, but let's give it a go. Record on. Record off, and then we bring the ceiling down. Before. And 
Now, it's not really going to work on melodic instruments, especially chords, but that's really just how distortions, saturations, plugins will behave. But another place we could use this is on our master track. So this is it on our master, our main track here. Same process. Going to wait a little bit longer here. We've set our auto gain. Now, if at any point you wanted to change the wet gain, then of course you can just turn the auto gain off in there, and then you can control the wet gain manually here. If we have the mix dial set at say 50% and you wanted to change the volume, you've also got the output dial underneath, which is after both the wet gain and the mix gain. So if you wanted to do any final corrections, then you could do on here. Now, just to talk about some of the other features that are on here that aren't completely perfected with that auto gain system, we've got the filter, two different sections, basically. You've got the focus, and then we've got just a regular high pass and a low pass, and both of these come before the clipping stage. So let's start with the focus mode on the left here. This is a way in which you can focus the distortion or clipping to certain parts of your frequency spectrum. So if we click focus and we click on high, then it's going to distort more of the high frequencies first. Obviously the same, but the opposite goes for the low. And this high mode is the one I probably use the most. If I bring the ceiling down, The kick drum is usually the sound that tends to distort the first because it will most likely be the loudest and have the most energy. If we bring this ceiling down quite a bit, I'm going to bring the output gain down a little bit here. And then we click on high. just means that the kick drum will be nice and clean and it will distort more of the high frequencies first. And the same goes, of course, for the other way, which I don't use as much, to be honest. And the filters on the right here are pretty much the same, but they are an actual low pass and a high pass filter compared to just the shelf of the focus on the left. If you wanted to remove a lot of the sub that's maybe being distorted first, you can just bring this up. And most of the time, I'd probably use this in partnership with the mix to then blend that distorted high frequency signal back in. But as I said before, the auto gain doesn't really work with this. So I'm just going to do this manually. So I've got this distorting quite a lot. I've got the mix where roughly where I want it to be. And I'm going to just turn the plugin off. 4.04. It's actually the same, which is a, a nice surprise. You can hear it's acting a little bit like a way to lift some of the higher frequencies. But as I said, it's still a bit of a work in progress, this section down here, but have a go. If you wanted to listen to exactly what you're clipping, you can click on this button in the bottom left too. As you've seen, it's really, really good for drums, a very quick and easy way to just make your drums sound nice and big. And it is out now. You can download this in the description below. And at the moment, the price is pretty low, again, just because there are some teething issues to sort out with the plugin and some extra features that I want to add in, like the auto gain for the filter section, but also things like oversampling and also some adjustments to the shape of the clipper, maybe some additional shapes as well, I think could be very useful. I made this plugin for myself really to help with my mixing workflow and I really hope it will help you too. If you do find any bugs or any problems or if you have any features that you think would be really cool just let me know in the comments below or you could email me at info at modulateonline.com but thanks for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.